whether on the tabletop or the computer, exciting sports simulation action plays here. This is Imagisport. Object, though. Hammer. Now, he, now wait a minute, though. Ha Dan Hammer doesn't have his rubber handy man hammer anymore, but Elder's handing him something. What is it? Oh, come on! He's not supposed to have that. Well, it is a rubber mallet. Technically not a rubber hammer, but it gets the job done. Three points right there, and now Hammer's going to go for the pin. Again, 11 to 43 is going to get it done here. This is one. That's two. And that is three. So, with the underhanded tactics of Roger Elder handing Dan Hammer a rubber mallet, Hammer clubs Roughneck Ron in the back of the head with it while Elder distracts the referee, and Hammer gets the three count because of it. Oh, what a travesty of justice this is. Yeah, Magisport presents Old School Wrestling, featuring the stars of the Old School Wrestling Association. All OSWA matches are simulated using Face to the Mat from Play Games. You can order your own copy of Face to the Mat along with various wrestler card sets by going to the Play Games website at www.play.com. Now, let's go to the OSWA studios. Hello there and welcome once again to Old School Wrestling here on Imagisport. I'm Derek Jones. Glad you could join us here today. I'm back after a brief hiatus uh, due to some work and training commitments, but I'm glad to be back and bringing you some great OSWA action. As you saw in the open, the Blue Collar Mafia are up to their old tricks again. Last week, Dan Hammer decided to bring a rubber mallet into play. Uh, in order to counteract his rubber hammer being taken away earlier. So not quite sure what the commissioner is going to do about that uh, in the future. But for right now, uh, Dan Hammer is uh, very happy with the weapons that he has at his disposal. He got the victory last week. And the Mafia is going to be in action again this week as Hammer and his partner Nick Knicky are going to see if they can get a world tag team title shot at initiation, but they have to get past the boom dogs in order to get that opportunity. That is going to be later in this show. Uh, also in this show, Mr. Everything is going to be taking on the Lobster Man in our main event. The Lobster Man wants to get his hands on anybody uh, dealing with the Blue Collar Mafia, especially our world heavyweight champion, Kevin Linton, and the two of them are going to meet at initiation in the steel cage. But Lobster Man doesn't want to wait till then. He wants to get his hands on the Blue Collar Mafia right now. And today will be his opportunity as he steps in the ring with Mr. Everything. Uh, also on the card today, we have Hank McPhee. Uh, we have Steve America making his in-ring debut uh, here in the OSWA. And, of course, we have... As always, our weekly installment of the Ringside Lounge. Without any further ado, let's kick off today's action. Here's Steve America with his first match. Let's go to the ring. Our opening contest here today on Old School Wrestling is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, already in the ring, from Globe, Arizona, weighing in at 260 pounds, this is Tucson Jones. And his opponent... Approaching the ring at this time from Griffin, Georgia, weighing in at 275 pounds, this is Steve America. All right, Steve America here to kick things off on this edition of Old School Wrestling. We will go to the pre-match roll, which is a three, which means a trip to Highlight Reel O. And so our Highlight Reel this time is a 46. The... Hotbox ally of the underdog wrestler, irate over the hot dogging of opponent, gets into argument, increase the grudge grade of both the ally and the underdog wrestler by one point. And the ally of the underdog wrestler in this case is someone who made his presence felt last week. That is being Chief Wahoo. Now, why on earth he is out here is anybody's guess, but it appears that he is uh, ready to 
put the bad mouth onto Steve America, and as a result, Chief Wahoo and Tucson Jones are both going to get ones added to their grudge grade total. And now that it is taken care of, we will put Chief Wahoo back in his hot box position, and we're about ready to get on away with some old school wrestling, and here we go, our first Quality check is for the favorite, and neither one has that, so we will move on. Uh, the trailing, in this case, it's the underdog, Tucson Jones. And so he will have two points here for a forearm smash. And he scored in the last fast action card, so he gets to use a signature move. And so with that, we will roll the dice, and he gets five points for it. So Chief Wahoo's presence has really rattled. Steve America at this point. Now we go to the strong quality. Neither wrestler is strong. Helped. Neither one is helped in this case as Wahoo is actually back in the backstage area. So no card there as well. Back to the favorite category. Nobody's favorite. So boo rule in effect here. And so Steve America is going to get three points of his own. Heavy. Neither one is heavy. TV grade, that's going to go to Steve America with a BTV grade. He gets two points for a chin lock. And now his specialty maneuver, since he scored on the last one, it's his coast-to-coast -coast, uh, slap shot or slingshot clothesline for another two points. As he comes back with a vengeance and a grudge grade. Both of them are tied on grudge, so it's going to go to the underdog, which is going to be Tucson Jones. A double stomp is going to get him two points. But now Steve America is the trailing wrestler, and he delivers a clubbing blow for two points of his own. Now the cheat quality. Neither one has cheat. Neither one is a title holder. And agile. They are both agile, which means that the trailing wrestler goes. That's Tucson Jones again. Two points. For a top rope elbow smash. And now we go to the highlight reel. So we'll do odd for A, even for B. It is a six. So we will go to highlight reel B for this next set of maneuvers. We have turned there. So here comes the 2D6 roll. It is an 11. We're going to go to highlight reel C. And that is going to be a 32. Wrestler fakes being knocked out. Then, as opponent celebrates, he gets up and finishes off opponent with a series of punishing body blows, scoring the immediate win. Oh boy, so, so, so basically, Tucson Jones looks like he's hurt here. Steve America is going to check on him, but then Tucson Jones plays possum and and knocks him out with something, I don't know what, and gets the one, two, three for it. And what an upset we have here on Old School Wrestling as Tucson Jones actually gets the Duke over Steve America. And I don't know, I think Chief Wahoo might have handed Steve America something. I'm not sure about that. But in any event, let's go to the post-match. We're going to go to Highlight Real X. And so, in that highlight reel, it's going to be a 25. The defeated wrestler angered during the TV interview after the interruption by opponent increases grudge grade two points. So, Steve America's grudge grade is going to go up to a three. Uh, obviously rattled by the presence of Chief Wahoo earlier in the match. And I'm pretty sure he had something to do with Tucson Jones having whatever he had in his hand to uh, get the victory in this match. So we'll see what pans out from that. But Tucson Jones is your upset winner in our opening bout here on Old School Wrestling. We'll be back with more Old School Wrestling action right after this timeout. If you like what you see here, you can order your own copy of Face to the Mat by going to the play.com website. Uh, Face to the Mat Pro Wrestling game is available for sale. 
and you can also get wrestling cards as well. I use the 70s uh, WAF set for my federation, but they also have 80 stars, 90 stars, and they also have current wrestling stars that are based after real life professional wrestlers of today. And new card sets are made about every two years, so you can always keep your wrestling federation fresh. Once again, that's face to the mat from play.com. Order your copy today. And our next contest here in Old School Wrestling is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first already in the ring from Fife, Alabama. He weighs in at 220 pounds. This is Fast Bobby Bernard. And his opponent. He brings along with him his fiddle named Ethel from Dixon, Tennessee. Weighing in at 260 pounds, this is Honky Tonk Hank McPhee. Hank McPhee getting ready for his old school wrestling debut. He had a lot to say on our last show about not getting any airtime. Well, now today is his golden opportunity. So we'll see what happens. Pre-match roll is a three. We will go to highlight reel O and a 51, where the hotbox ally of the underdog wrestler boils over here after hearing unflattering comments in a TV interview, charges into camera view, and attacks the favored wrestler, increases the ally's grudge grade two points. Well, Hank McPhee uh, was uh, part of the shenanigans that went on last week between Croc Wilson and Z, so Croc Wilson comes out and he puts the beat down on Hank McPhee a little bit before order is restored. And as a result, Croc Wilson's grudge grade is going to move up a couple points. It was originally a 2, and now it is going to become a 4. So Croc Wilson's new grudge grade is 4 heading into this match here today. So with that taken care of, the ref... Clears Croc Wilson out, and he calls for the bell, and here we go. And now we have a test of strength if both wrestlers are strong and or powerful. Hank McPhee is strong on a circle. Fast Bobby is not strong at all, so no test of strength there. Object. Hank McPhee has the object. He takes the fiddle to the shoulder of Fast Bobby Bernard for one point to help recover him. And so, do we get no outside interference, though, because neither man is helped at this juncture. So now we go to an Agile check. They're both Agile. Uh, since nobody scored on the last card, we will look at both wrestlers here. And Fast Bobby's the trailer, so a spinning back fist is going to give Fast Bobby one point. Is Fast Bobby strong? He is not, so we are going to... Go ahead and flip over this way. Is Hank McPhee agile? He is. So a top rope elbow match gives Hank McPhee two points. Back to the highlight reel. We did B last time. So this time we are going to do highlight reel A. So in that case, we'll go ahead and roll the dice here and get a 43. Wrestler delivers opponent's specialty on opponent and score the appropriate points. So Hank McPhee is going to use Fast Bobby Bernard's uh, tactic of wearing the opponent out by racing around the ring. So it's actually a D6 number for points. So Hank McPhee is going to get four big ones here. And we move on. To mean, neither wrestler is mean. So we'll go to the cheat category. Neither one's cheat either. And strong. Hank McPhee is strong, but only on a circle. So neither one there. That's three in a row. That's boo rule. And so two more points for Hank McPhee. Powerful. Neither one is powerful. Strong. Again, uh, only on a circle is Hank McPhee strong. Smart. Hank McPhee and Bobby Bernard are both smart anywhere. So since Bobby is the trailing wrestler... A slingshot clothesline gives Fast Bobby two points. And so, neither one is helped. Mean, neither one is mean. Object, 
Watch out, Hank McPhee's got Ethel again. And this time he delivers another blow for another two points. And now we go to cheat. Neither one is cheat. Neither one is a title holder. Neither one has helped. Another boo rule result. And so, oh, six big points. And Hank McPhee sets up for his finisher, the McPhee, with a knee, knee lift. 11 to 35 is going to get it done. He gets a 13. He connects with the knee lift, covers Bernard, hooks the leg. One, two, three. That is it. Honky Tonk Hank McPhee wins his debut here on Old School Wrestling. And so we go to the post-match, and it is a five. He is a heel, so we are going to go to Highlight Real You. And here's the dice roll for that. It is a 43. The heel win results in the face losing a choice quality. Okay, so Fast Bob, he's going to lose one of his qualities here. Uh, so I think... I think he's still pretty athletic, so we're going to we're going to say that he's not going to be able to use the smart quality for a while. So we will take that away from him. So with that in mind, Hank McPhee, your winner here on Old School Wrestling. We're just about ready to go to the ringside lounge. That is coming up next. You are watching Old School Wrestling right here on Imagine Sport. And once again, it's time to close those shades for another episode of the Ringside Lounge. And as always, your host here on the Ringside Lounge is none other than Copacetic. So let's see who Copacetic's guest is going to be today. We are in the guest booking chart and we're going to roll a 53. It's going to be a choice wrestler who you want to to push. Well, somebody who is uh, is trying to get on a roll as of late, although he's been stymied a little bit, but he really wants to uh, make a name for himself and he has some revenge on his mind, is Roughneck Ron Cassidy. As you recall last week, Roughneck Ron got sneak attacked by Nick Nicky before his match with Dan Hammer. So Roughneck Ron is going to be our guest here in the Ringside Lounge today. Let's go to Highlight Real Eye and see what happens. It's going to be a 66, and so they're different personas, so it's going to be 66D off the chain interview, roll one each on Highlight Reel's O, S, N, J. Oh boy. Okay, so let's go to Highlight Reel O first. See what happens there. Alright, so a 13. Favorite wrestler gets overconfident, decreases the grudge grade one point. So, okay, that's interesting. Roughneck Ron probably just talking about how happy he is to be in the OSWA, so we will eliminate his grudge grade for now. And take a trip over to Highlight Real S and see what happens there. And that's going to be a 44. So, face wins the match, face gains the heel gimmick, increase, increase the face and the heel grade, one letter grade, reduce heel, one letter grade, plus heel must find a new gimmick. So, okay, well there wasn't really a match here, it was an interview, so we're just, we're going to go ahead and give Roughneck Ron the, the TV grade. So, we're going to go ahead and up Roughneck Ron's TV grade to a double A. And meanwhile, Copacetic uh, continues to get humiliated on his own show. And so we're going to take him down from a D to an E. Ugly. Okay, so we have that taken care of. And so now uh, Copacetic does not really have a gimmick at this point, except for the fact that he is the host of the lounge. But Roughneck Ron doesn't really want to have anything to do with that. And let's go to Highlight Reel J for our last portion of the interview. And that's going to be a 46. Commissioner appears on the show. So here we go there. And he forces the guest 
to team with a random wrestler for a new tag team, and the name drawn is a hot box foe scheduled for the first match of our next show. Uh, so you know what that means, and this does not look good because what's going to happen here is that the commissioner is going to force Roughneck Ron to tag with Nick Kanicki next week. Nick Kanicki's not really looking too thrilled about it either. So, especially since he has a number one contenders match coming up with Dan Hammer tonight for the OSWA Tag Team Gold, but next week he has to go ahead and team with Roughneck Ron. Interesting to see what things will play out there. Uh, we'll, we'll find out what happens next week on that. But for right now, we will be back with more old school wrestling right after this timeout. Wow, that was certainly one of the most memorable ringside lounges we have had here on old school wrestling. And how about that? The commissioner coming out and forcing Roughneck Ron Cassidy to team with his enemy, Nick Kanicki. How's that gonna play out, especially with what we know, uh, with what's coming up, you know, Kanicki and Hammer having a number one contenders match here in just a little bit. Uh, but one thing I will tell you is that right after the ringside lounge segment ended, uh, backstage, uh, some of the uh, backstage workers I saw Roger Elder go into the commissioner's office and close the door. Not quite sure what that's about. I'm sure he's probably trying to weasel his way out of something. Hopefully we'll have some more information on that uh, before we go off the air today. But also speaking about things that have been happening, um, as a result of in our opening contest, Chief Wahoo coming out and totally getting Steve America rattled and causing him to lose his match today, Steve America was out around in the back looking for Chief Wahoo while uh, Hank McPhee's match was going on. And backstage observers have told me that he that Steve America did uh, catch up with Chief Wahoo and he was uh, demanding answers. And then Yefeniel Akid came out uh, to be with Chief Wahoo, basically telling Steve America he should just mind his own business and that Chief Wahoo doesn't have to do anything. And the two of them were about ready to attack uh, Steve America until the Qua Chinese bear Quang Choi came out to even the odds a little bit. Now, security was able to come in and get things under control uh, before we had a little Donnybrook on our hands. But uh, with that being said, the commissioner has ordered a match for our next show of old school wrestling. And so it's gonna be in a tag match on one side of the ring, Yefeniel Akid, and Chief Wahoo, and on the other side is going to be Quang Choi and Steve America. So that tag team match will take place next time here on Old School Wrestling, which will be our go-home episode before OSWA initiation. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's head over to the ring now and let's find out who our Number one contenders for the World Tag Team Championships are going to be. Is it going to be the Blue Collar Mafia? Is it going to be the Boom Dogs? We'll find out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our next match here on Old School Wrestling is a tag team match and it is scheduled for one fall. It is a number one contenders match with the winning team going on to face the good old boys for the OSWA World Tag Team Titles at Initiation. Here is the first team number one at a total combined weight of 495 pounds. From Newmarket, Ontario and Troy, Michigan, respectively, here are Ed Boom Boom Barrington and Rob Big Dog Dickerson. Together, they are the Boom Dogs. And their opponents making their way to the ring at this time accompanied by the blue collar mafia leader roger the welder elder at a total combined weight of 585 pounds introducing first from south toledo ohio this is nick kanicki 
and his partner from Beardsley, Georgia, Dan Hammer. So, Kanicki and Hammer taking on the Boomdogs here to see who will face the good old boys for the belts at initiation. Highlight Reel O is where we are going to go for our pre-match roll, and that's going to be an 11, which means a trip over to Highlight Reel P. And then a 55 takes us to Highlight Reel Q. And a 12. The favored wrestlers get a choice new quality. Interesting because both Kaniki and Hammer do have plenty of qualities to choose from. So let's see. We have, let's see, quick, smart, mean, strong, powerful, heavy, strong, powerful, object, chain, mean, and heavy. Hmm. Well, they are... Well, Kaneki is quick, so we can go ahead and give Kaneki Agile as well. So we'll go ahead and give him the Agile quality. And for Mr. Hammer, uh, let's see, what will we do with him? We, he's already he's already st strong, powerful object, mean, and heavy. And let's say we give him a... Uh, He's pretty cunning. Let's give him the qual. Let's give him the smart quality. And and we'll basically just make those. Uh, this this can be based. Let's see. Kaniki's agile. Actually, I don't want to give him agile. Instead, since they are the blue collar mafia, we're going to give him cheat quality instead. That seems to be a little bit more of an appropriate one for him. And they're both going to be star qualities. So just another advantage to be given to the Blue Collar Mafia as if they needed any more help. So rep call for the bell. Here we go. Number one contenders match is underway. And see, the favorite, neither Big Dog nor Nick Kanicki has the favorite category. So now we go to the wild card chart. So let's... Let's turn to our tag team wild card chart here, and we go to a 22. Is it cheat? Yes, Nick Kanicki has his newly acquired cheat quality. Rules violation, unseen by the referee. Wrestler scores two points. So right away, Kanicki will score two points for his team. Is there going to be a tag here? It is a five, so yes. There will be a tag, and so out comes Kanicki, and in comes Dan Hammer. And we go to the next uh, fast action card. It is heavy, and Dan Hammer is heavy. Big Dog is not, so one more point for the, uh, for the Blue Collar Mafia team, and another tag. So the Mafia... Are really coming out on fire here to start this match. Nick Kanicki is in the match again. And now we go to object. Kanicki does not have an object, neither does Big Dog. So neither wrestler scores, and so we will move on. Strong category. Nick Kanicki strong, Big Dog is not. So one point for a shoulder tackle. And we have a tag again. Um, actually, it is going to be a double team maneuver. So the Mafia really pouring it on the Boom Dogs here, as now they are up to five points, and the Boom Dogs do not have any yet at this time. And so helped. Well, both teams are helped because it is a tag team match. So some extracurricular activity brings the Boom Dogs back in this match, and they're going to get a double team now. So Big Dog finally tags out to Boom Boom Barrington, and they get an extra point for it to get back into this thing. Now it's TV grades. Um, both Hammer and Barrington are C's, so Barrington's trailing, so it's going to be a hammer lock, and it's going to be one point. Do we have a tag here? Again, it's another double team by the Boom Dogs. So now they take the lead in this match, and we move on. Oh, highlight reel. So... We were at A last time, so this time we're going to go back to Highlight Real B. 
And that's going to be a 56. Wrestler delivers opponent's specialty on opponent and score the appropriate points. So in this case, what's going to happen here is that Dan Hammer, the favored wrestler, is going to use the dog pound against the boom dogs and three points goes right there. So let's see if there is a tag and a double team. Why not? By the rule breaking blue collar mafia. Another extra point and Kanicki is back in. And now we go back to the wild card chart. So here we go. Tag team wild card and we go to a 65. Oh, back to highlight real A. So here we go. Highlight real A. A 16. Referee distraction. Opponent scores two points. So as the referee is yelling at Roger Elder and trying to restore order, guess what? The Boom Dogs take advantage of it and they climb back into this match here and they make the tag. So Big Dog comes out and Boom Boom goes back in. So with that, here we go. Oh, trailing wrestler. Those are the boom dogs. So a reverse and brain buster. And we get three big points for the boom dogs. And let's check for a tag. And yes, another tag comes out. And big dog goes in. TV grade. Both of them are C's. But this time it's the mafia who is trailing. But it doesn't matter because it's zero points for a flapjack. No points, means both wrestlers stayed in, and we go to helped. Uh, G, M, or V, depending on the source of the helped. Because it could be, it's, let's, we'll do highlight real M as it looks like Roger Elder is going to stick his nose in where it doesn't belong once again. 35, opponent scores one point, rebels in a moment, does not notice wrestlers manage to sneak out from behind, chair smash over a top of opponent's head and the wrestler scores one point so both teams score a point on the exchange but in that fracas it looks like big dog is covering kaneki and the referee finally sees it and he goes over to do a count 11 to 43 and kaneki easily kicks out at one so Let's see if there is a tag here. There is a, actually a hot tag and a regular tag. We'll just say that both we'll just say that both teams tag out here. So now we're at Boom Boom and we are at big at uh, Dan Hammer. So we move on. Grudge. Boom Boom has the grudge. And so he gives an arm bar for another point, and he turns that around into a pinning combination on Dan Hammer. Again, it's going to be 11 to 43, but again, Dan Hammer kicks out. So let's see, do the Boom Dogs tag? Uh, no, they do not tag this time, so the same two will be in the ring. We go to Strong. So Hammer is strong in a circle, Boom Boom strong anywhere, but Hammer is the trailer, so he will get the three points for the elevated Hammer Lock, and he will have a pin attempt on Boom Boom Barrington. Again, 11 to 43, but Boom Boom kicks out. So let's see, do we have a tag here for the Blue Collar Mafia? Yes, we do. So Dan Hammer goes out. Nick and Nicky comes in, and we're getting down to the wire. TV grade, both of them are C's. Uh, trailing team and they are both tied so the trailing team is the underdog that is going to be the big dogs boom boom and it is going to be the big dog and so they will get the point for the head scissors here and that means that boom boom gets one point he gets a pin attempt on Kaneki so Kaneki was a C, but now it's down to a D because of the chip. So it's 11 to 16, but Kaneki kicks out. So let's see, do the Boom Dogs take it? And oh yes, they, they get a double team. They get a double team on the Mafia. And so with that in mind, Big Dog is calling for the Bali Slam side pile driver followed by the Hound Howl. 11 to 33. 44, 1, 2, kick out by Kaneki. Oh, that was close. 
Do we have another tag here? Yes, we do. And Barrington's going to come back in. And we go to Agile. And neither man is Agile. We go to Heavy. Kanicki's Heavy. He gets two big points for a body avalanche. And now it's going to be time for his finisher, the Nuts and Bolts Knee Bar. 11 to 26. 61. A nonchalant cover. One, two, and a kick out by Barrington. Will he, kick, will he tag in Dan Hammer? He will not. It'll still be Kanicki and Barrington in the ring. And we go to Mean. Mean on a square is Nick Kanicki. He's going to get three points with a triple neck breaker. And it's going to be a pin on the chip. So again, 11 to 43. There's one. But Boom Boom kicks out as two. But now he has two chips that he has to worry about here. And, oh, they get a double team. Kanicki and Hammer double team. Boom Boom Barrington, who's very weakened right now. And with that, they get another point and another pin attempt. And this time, since Boom Boom has two chips, it's going to go down from a C to an E. So he needs an 11, 12, or a 13. There's a 1. There is 2. And there is 3. And we have new number 1 contenders for the OSWA Tag Team Championship. And that is going to be the Blue Collar Mafia team of Nick Kanicki and Dan Hammer in a very, very hard-fought match against the Boom Dogs. Roger Elder comes out to celebrate, and we go to the post-match. And that's going to take us to Highlight Real X. And in that highlight is going to be 26. The defeated wrestler, miffed by announcer's comments, increased the wrestler's grudge grade one point. So Boom Boom is going to have his grudge grade up, increased from a 5 to a 6. And then the big dog is going to have his up from an 8 to a 9. Very hard-fought match, but in the end, it was the Blue Collar Mafia coming out on top. We'll return with more old-school wrestling right after this. Time out. So there you have it, like it or not, Nick Kanicki and Dan Hammer are your new number one contenders. And now they are signed at initiation to meet the good old boys for the OSWA World Tag Team Championships. That's coming up at initiation. Congratulations to them. Now on to our main event. As you know, Kevin, or I should say the Lobster Man has been looking for Kevin Linton and the Blue Collar Mafia for weeks now. And so, Lobster Man finally gets his chance at a member of the Blue Collar Mafia, that being Mr. Everything. That is our main event. Let's not wait any longer. Let's head to the ring and join this match. And ladies and gentlemen, here is your old school wrestling main event for today. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first approaching the ring at this time, representing the Blue Collar Mafia, Accompanied by the Mafia leader, Roger the Welder Elder, and his personal assistant, Dangerous Curves, Debbie Caruso, from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 255 pounds, this is Mr. Everything, Jeff Fairweather. And his opponent making his way to the ring at this time. He hails from the Empire of Crustacea, weighing in at 300 pounds. This is the Lobster Man, Jeff Costa. All right, Caruso and Elder accompany Mr. Everything to the ring. And Lobster Man desperately wants to get his hands on any members of the Blue Collar Mafia at this point as he prepares for his steel cage match against Kevin Linton for the OSWA world title at initiation. Pre-match goes to highlight real O, and it's going to be a 22, which means a turnover to highlight real P. And an 11 goes to highlight real Q. And then we have 35. The Choice Hot Fox member interrupts TV interview to accuse both wrestlers of being soft. 
Match becomes a threesome. If Hotbox member wins, decrease the TV grade of the other two wrestlers by one letter grade. Oh boy. And so, who is going to be the third wrestler that's going to come out? But wait a minute, Roger Elder takes the microphone here and says, wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, no, no. Here's, here's what's going to happen here. Okay. Uh, Lobster Man, you want to get your hands on Kevin Linton? Well, guess what? You have a golden opportunity because Kevin Linton is in the building tonight and he is going to be here. So guess what? You'll get to, you get to take him on, but you're going to have to take on Mr. Everything too. So look out, fans. We have a handicap match. Lobster Man's going to go up against both Mr. Everything and the OSWA World Heavyweight Champion, the Steamroller, Kevin Linton. Oh, boy. The odds are really stacked against Lobster Man at this point. So, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and throw another person in the hot box here to replace Linton. And so now, we have ourselves a handicap match. And here we go with it. And it's going to go to Smart. And so, both of them are smart, so Mr. Everything is going to get that point, and we'll see if he tags in Kevin Linton. He does not. He's going to stay in there against the Lobster Man. Neither one has the favorite category. Uh, Mr. Everything, however, is quick, so two big points there, and so he weakens Lobster Man down, but no tag, so it's still going to be Lobster Man and Mr. Everything. And so we go to the smart category. Both of them are smart, but Lobster Man gets three big points there. And so is Lobster Man agile? Though he is not. So we're going to turn around and go to powerful. Mr. Everything is powerful on a circle. So he's going to get six big points for a pile driver. And so he has Lobster Man really weakened. But he's still, Kevin Linton does not want to tag in yet. And why should he? He's the world champion. He's just going to let Mr. Everything do his dirty work for him. Okay, so we have the specialty. Okay, and so in this case, though, Lobster Man makes a comeback because he is the trailing wrestler. And so he does a crustaceous claw for four points. And now we go to the wild card chart. So, I guess we'll use, I guess we would use tag team here. We'll just try that. 46. Powerful. And so, yes, Lobster Man is powerful. So he takes both members of the opposing tag team and does a head cracker for three points. And now we go to the mean category. Uh, Lobster Man's mean, all right. He gets two points. And guess what? He has Mr. Everything down for a pin attempt. But Mr. Everything kicks out easily. But Mr. Everything is reeling in this match. Lobster Man holding his own here. Oh, back to the wild card chart again. And it's going to be a 25. Is he a favorite? Lobster Man is not a favorite. So the opposing team connives to deliver double blows to the wrestler. Three points, and Lobster Man is down. And so, but again, it's going to be 11 to 43. There is one. Here is a 16, so he kicks out easily at this point. And so let's see if there's finally a tag to Kevin Linton. There is not. Um, again, Mr. Everything is doing the dirty work. And so we have trailing. They're both in the same space. So guess what? Mr. Everything is going to be the one that's going to get it. And he's going to be the one that gets the finishing move, the Utila Takedown Flying Shoulder Tackle for 11 to 35. So Linton... Linton cracks Lobster Man while the ref's not looking. Mr. Everything does that Utila takedown, and let's see if it's effective. It is 35. Yes, it is. One, two, and three. And just like that, the Blue Collar Mafia team, if you want to call it that, of Mr. Everything and Kevin Linton has defeated the Lobster Man. So Elder and Caruso uh, come back in. And they celebrate, and so here comes the rest of the Blue Collar Mafia, Nick Kanicki and Dan Hammer as well. 
And let's see what happens though with the post match. And it's going to go to Highlight Reel X. Are we going to see a massive attack? We will soon find out. 55. Go into Highlight Reel Y for this one. And then 35. The Hotbox Ally of the winning wrestler grabs the PA microphone from the defeated wrestler, makes a succinct, barbed, memorable comment, increasing the Ally's TV grade by two letter grades. Well, the Ally was Nick Konecki, so his TV grade's going to jump. It goes from a C to an A. So just like that, the Blue Collar Mafia are standing tall in the ring after basically what turned out to be an unfair two-on-one match, Linton and everything against the Lobster Man. We need to get order restored in here. Uh, Linton and everything are your winners tonight, and who knows what condition the Lobster Man is going to be in come initiation when he has to go against Kevin Linton for the title. Uh, let's go back to the studio for today's wrap-up. And as you just saw in our main event, the Blue Collar Mafia once again have the upper hand on the Lobster Man. What was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one match with Mr. Everything turned into a handicap match with Kevin Linton getting involved. And it was a pretty one-sided match at that. And when it was all said and done, the Blue Collar Mafia was celebrating over a beaten down Lobster Man. How's that going to play out for our main event at Initiation where the Lobster Man is supposed to take on Kevin Linton for the OSWA World Heavyweight Championship inside of a steel cage? Only time will tell there. But before we get to Initiation, we have one more show of old school wrestling. That's going to be our next show, which will be entitled our Go Home Show. As we mentioned before, uh, we're going to have a tag team match between Yefeni El Akid and his new friend Chief Wahoo. They're going to team up to take on the Chinese bear Quang Choi and Steve America. That ought to be a Donnybrook. Uh, Crash Bradley is going to return to the ring next week. Uh, also next week, you will see the big fish, Marlon Kimbrough. He will be inside the ring as well in singles action. We will have another installment of the Ringside Lounge. And in our main event for our next show, um, as you recall, back in the Ringside Lounge, Roughneck Ron was ordered by the commissioner to team up with Nick Kanicki. Yes, the man who sneak attacked him a few shows back and caught, basically caused uh, Roughneck Ron to lose to Dan Hammer. Well, Roger Elder, right shortly after the ringside lounge segment ended, went to the commissioner's office, and it is being reported that the commissioner has decided to make this a six-man affair. So on one side of the ring, you're going to have Roughneck Ron Cassidy, Nick Kanicki, and Dan Hammer. And then on the other side, you're going to have the good old boys and Gaylord T. Good seeing his first in-ring action in the OSWA. So once again, Next show, our main event, no titles on the line, but it's going to be a preview of what you're going to see at initiation. Nick Kanicki, Dan Hammond, and Roughneck Ron Cassidy take on the good old boys and Gaylord T. Good. That is our main event for next show's edition of Old School Wrestling. Um, so from all of us here at the OSWA, this is Derek Jones saying thank you for watching Old School Wrestling today. Have a great day. Keep playing those games. And most of all, keep on rolling. We'll see you next time.